Pletchums! Oh, it's been, it's been so long. We just dust off the microphone. <laughs> dust off myself, man. Okay, Dan, 951 subs. We finally did it. Landmark. Landmark <laughs> subs. So we thought we'd mark this occasion with a little Q&A, you know, a bit of a Pletchums, this is your life sort of thing. So we asked everyone to leave a question in the Discord. And surprisingly, we got more than like two questions. Yeah, enough to warrant a video. <laughs> enough to warrant a video. So let's just cut straight in. Let's see what people want to know about the, the old platchums. So Fresh from the Delhi asks, congrats on the progress and hopefully you hit 1K soon. If you could plat 100% of the game all over again, what would it be and why? Do you want to, do you want to kick off, Dan? A strong opening question here. Um, well, I don't have many 100%, so... <laughs> um, let's see. Um, you. I would, I'd, I'd, I'd like, you know, I'm going to be unoriginal and I'll have to go back to one of the Dark Souls games. I think maybe Dark Souls 3, just because it doesn't have a second version like the other games. And yeah. I'd love to, I'd love to play through it again to get the, the platinum again. So um, yeah, Dark Souls three for me, I think. All the choices, I think it's probably like out of like you know the stain because it, you don't have the option. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, that's because you know you've got the. I've I've done Demon Souls twice and Dark Souls one twice and Dark Souls two twice. Um, oh yeah, maybe Bloodborne as well. Bloodborne or Dark Souls three. Yeah. Okay, solid. Uh, mine would be one that I could do again, that I might do again. It might be my first ever stack, and that's Metal Gear Solid 3. Again, it's coming. People it's coming know this. People should not need yeah. to ask this question. If you've watched more than one video, I always go, I love Metal Gear, and you're like, God, I love Dark Souls. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Summed so, up our channel. like In, 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 in a nutshell, in a nutshell. Yeah. So, uh, Ixoria asks, what are your hopes and predictions regarding the PS Plus and PS Now? Um, Good one. Yeah. I hope that they kind of meld the service or like join it together um, into one at some point. Uh, the PlayStation Plus games, I mean, I know they get kind of lambasted and all but the fact of the matter is that it's kind of nice that Sony even do it anymore like it definitely started as an enticement to join on you know PlayStation Plus because PS3 online was free so I mean the fact that like I got like Final Fantasy 7 remake this year I mean I still think it's a, a service that like occasionally you can strike gold I mean if if you're like me and are a little bit you know picky with what they what they uh, buy or you know kind of hesitant to buy something day one it could you know pop up something like control you know that i was thought was interesting like i got that on the service um and with uh so yeah i i, I hope they kind of continue the free games but i do think like kind of welding them together in some kind of like super plus now or whatever i don't know um and playstation now uh the main gripe i have with it apart from like, it's not, like, the deepest catalogue. I just think that PS Now has to be used as a legacy platform. I mean, if they're not going to, you know, sell these games individually or if they kind of do, a, like, a half-hearted thing like they did on the PS4 where they released a select few PS2 games and then just forgot because that, it's like, PS4 could emulate PS2. They could have made every game available on it. I think PS Now would be the platform in which they should do that, and I think it would be the most streamlined way of doing it. And um, I think just the just the handiest. It might be something that would entice people to, you know, hop on the service because I do think that's kind of like the forgotten child of that. Like I don't think it, like I'm sure the numbers are good and all, but I think that might be something that would make it actually um, kind of appealing for someone like me. You know, it's like here's like. PlayStation now, the whole history of the console, all the generations, and yeah. Well, what, what about yourself? Yeah, you know, I, I can't disagree. I think it's, um, I don't know, I don't know, would it ever come to to pass? You know, it, it sounds too good to be true to get like the whole back catalog. That would on be my it, hope but... part of yeah, that yeah. question, <laughs> but not my prediction. Yeah, um, I think, yeah, like, someone who's kind of dabbled in 
PS Now this year. Like, it's definitely a, a decent service if you kind of have games that you want to play on it, ready to go. Um, it's, it's To me, I, I use it exactly like I use Netflix, like very rarely unless there is something that I want to, you know, use it for, I for example. Um, yeah. yeah, so um, I was very disappointed that, like, say, the PS3 games that are on there, um, number one, they're not downloadable, of course, because you know they won't run on it, so you have to stream them. But they, none of them, or very few of them, come with DLC, which mm-hmm. just baffles me. So you can't buy the DLC or you can't stream it because it's it's just not included in that edition or whatever. Yeah, which is, it, feels, it feels half-baked to me, mm, Yeah. In, in, so, in fairness. So, like, yeah, it definitely uh, like a, a realistic expansion of PS Now um, is my hope and prediction like i know that they're not going to do day one releases on ps now they've kind of been pretty clear to say that Mm -hmm. so i'm realistic that it it will be games like older games that are coming to the system but i'd love to see more indies um more interesting games like i've I've played some great games on ps now this year but um, at this point i feel like i've kind of exhausted it so i'd Mm -hmm. like to see you know maybe more than like four or five games added each month that Sometimes they should be that adding is like keeping month to month and not like Netflix, yeah. where you buy it, binge it for a couple of weeks or a month, and then cancel the subscription again. Yeah, or yeah. you know, log Fair. into your dad's account. Yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, PS Plus. You know, look, I I'm I'm perfectly happy with the way PS Plus works. Like for what's effectively you know a sixty euro subscription. That's how much it is, uh, at least in Ireland. Um, I I enjoy the kind of anticipation of like what's next month going to be like, like? The speculation. Um, where yeah, it's like, and, oh yeah, it's definitely going to be like Dark Souls three and like God of War this month, and then it's like Virtual Tennis seventeen, <laughs> or like you know Happy Go Lucky Stew or some like unknown game. And everyone's like ah, but look, I I still think the fact that they've kept that going for so long, like the monthly games, and they can't all be hitters. No, they just can't and I've be. got some great ones this year as well from that. Like, oh, said, like um, Final Fantasy VII Control, like, I mean, those two alone, you know, saved me 70, 80 euro on buy, because those, those were two games I wanted to buy anyway. Yeah. So I think it's worth it. But anyway, moving on, Platinum Bro 7 asks, would you rather fight 100 duck-sized lions or one lion-sized duck? Yes. Hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Uh, um, I would go with the the duck just because imagine the feast you'd have after you murder it. Because um, I'm a fan of duck. Yeah, yeah, I I don't disagree with you there. Um, duck sized lions, like ducks aren't that small, and like I feel like you know effectively then it's just like more kind of muscly cats. Yeah, really but, vicious. Yeah, vicious, and relentless. Like, Cats. And cats can be quite vicious anyway, and quite formidable. So definitely the duck. Yeah, the one lion sized duck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or you could like train the. You could train the the lion. Ooh. <laughs> I don't think lion's been domesticated yet. So. No damn it. Okay, there goes that dream. Anyway, mm. Sam La fifty seven. How much longer do you see yourself trophy hunting for, and will you ever view your list as finished? For me, I see my list um, the same way that I would see any other part of my uh, estate <laughs> once I die. And my, my trophy list will be passed to my children. And um, that, that list, then you know, they will pass it to their children and so on, so forth. Yes, so, um, yes. Yeah, Nin- no, Nin- no Nin- plans Empire to stop. <laughs> will live through the generations. <laughs> yeah, no plans to stop. Um, I've been kind of like mulling this over recently and I think like the last big milestone that I can feasibly hit based on my like, you know, rate of getting platinums, which has only dwindled in the past couple of years, it would be 10,000 trophies. I don't see myself getting 100,000. It's taken me 13, almost 14 years to get 8,700 and whatever. And I was just thinking there'd be something nice about just like putting Itaki Bono to rest on 10,000 and just go like 10,000 for me like trophies from games I, I did really like and or loved that would be kind of like the noble way but I think as long as I'm gaming 
I think my trophy hunting, it has slowed down. Maybe mix of, you know, I'm just busy with, with life. And also like the games I've been playing the past year or two are kind of, you know, big kind of meaty games that take a long time to platinum. But um, I think just as long as I'm playing games and having fun, I think I will probably keep going for trophies. But I think when I'm closing in on that 10K, I might just go, hmm, let, 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 let's just see if that, if, what, if I could complete my list, which uh, we both can't fully complete our list. It's all, you know, either add new games or, you know, you know unobtainables. But yeah, I, I, I think for the foreseeable future, but maybe when I'm sniffing around 10K, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of see, you know, maybe just, you know, come up with a new PSN, just go mad. Just, just leave Kataki Bono in the past, but also pass it down to whoever will take it. Um, <laughs> so, next question: One game you've regretted playing for the platinum, Killing Floor Two. Quick, quick, easy, out the gate answer there. Killing um, Floor Two. Not that it's like the worst game ever, but the incessant DLC. Mm -hmm. It's, it's my god! Like, just stop. <laughs> just, I can't keep downloading it. The only the only thing about that is that you do get like a an ultra rare trophy every three months, you know, which is isn't too bad. Is it worth it though, Dan? Is it <laughs> is it keep up yeah, like eighty k eighty gigabytes um constantly used up on the on the PlayStation. Yeah, yeah it's it's just uh, yeah, I don't know. But Killing Floor Two, and if there is anything else um a lot of the, the platinums for my list anyway came with like you know a sense of joy or maybe like relief i would say like maybe one or two games that maybe i had to dedicate an inordinate amount of time to that could have been better spent playing other games so mm -hmm. for me like honestly like tomb raider kind of springs to mind this is the uh the 2013 <clears throat> one j just just because the online was so woeful, if I wasn't talking to, um, I think I played it with Denzo, if I wasn't having fun just chatting with him, I, I, like the two of us, like, this is just miserable. This is like, the, like it was just so, so terribly bad um, that it almost completely, any of the good things, the single player campaign did just went out the window when you go for that platinum. And I think yeah. the only other one, <clears throat> maybe maybe Far Cry 2 for the same kind of reason that it's like you're repeating the boosting over and over and over and over again and at some point you know you're like I could be playing you know something else that doesn't require me to do this well mm. what, what, what about you I'm surprised you even had one answer to be honest I was kind of looking at that question going oh I don't know what what are you going to say for that um for me, I think the one that the clear one, like I really enjoy most of the games that are on my list. Like I really did enjoy them. And generally, if I don't enjoy a game, I just won't put myself through it and keep playing mm. it. Um, the, maybe the one game that I regret buying and playing that's on my list is um, Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike. Counter yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Counter-Strike Go, just for the... The simple reason that it should never have been on PlayStation. Um, Such a PC you know, thing, isn't it? Yeah, like I was, I was playing quite a lot of Counter Strike at the time um, on Steam, and I thought, oh wow, Counter Strike on PlayStation lets you what's like. That would be great. Um, yeah, and I think I got the platinum in like three hours or something, Holy and shit. I. Yeah, it just really did not work. And did everyone feel empty. <laughs> everyone that was playing it was playing it like I don't know, it just it just like everyone was like, you know, spinning around and like, you know, running into the walls and stuff. It just felt like you know, like a like a knockoff. <laughs> yeah, it just it just felt so wrong. Um so yeah, like when I see that game on my list, I'm kinda of like, you should never have been born. You, you should know? You don't belong here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. There's there's another game that um that I, I played when I just got the VR. It's called Pixel Junk, and I Is I picked junk? up the VR. I picked up the VR day one, so um I got the VR, 
and I was looking for things to play. I kind of got the games I wanted to. And then I was looking for like another shooting game and I saw this pixel junk one and I played it and I had a great time with it. Like I played it for like two days and I got the platinum and I, I thought it was great because I was like so into the VR for that like mm-hmm. w- one week. And, um, <laughs> and, and then like, I was like, I don't know, I, I saw something about it later on and I looked it up and it had like atrocious reviews and everyone was like, this is, this is rubbish. And I was like, oh my God, I thought that game was pretty fun. You, you know? took off the fear, um, like I'm going back in, I don't yeah. care what anyone says. <laughs> so yeah, so sometimes I think, oh, that Pixel Junk game is supposed to be really bad, but I remember it actually being quite fun. So um, I don't regret it, but I'm, I'm always um, kind of... I always uh, I'm sad that it didn't get like a better reception because I had a good time with it. <laughs> <laughs> your, the, your answer for this is just taking a turn. Yeah. <laughs> just, justice for pixel junk. Yeah. Um, just so. Yeah. No. So mainly, mainly CS:GO and yeah, um, CS:GO definitely. CSGO. That's my answer. So, if you were challenged. Uh, first of all, this is a question. I didn't even say it was Beamer231 that asked uh, regret, uh, what game do you regret playing? And then why drag Riot94? Uh, that's, that's Welsh. And I think that definitely that's like, Welsh. Yeah, that, yeah we, we're, we're sorry for the pronunciation. Um, yeah, no, I was going to try it again there and I'm like, mm, maybe no, not. No, no. Um, yeah. <laughs> if you were challenged to complete every single trophy list for one game series, which series would you choose? Mm, good. This is a Great funny question. one because it's mm-hmm. not like which series would you like to just have all the platforms for? Yeah. Because I would immediately go Yakuza. This is very yeah. much for like you have to play it and it's a challenge. And then yeah. I'd be a little hesitant to go for the Yakuza just for the sheer amount of time that's involved. Yeah. Oh, um... I'll, I'll tell you my answer first. Yeah, you you go. My answer is Yakuza. <laughs> <laughs> you stole my answer. <laughs> no, like that was definitely the the series I thought because I always feel like you know, I I think my list has kind of a really good selection of different games and different series, but I'm I'm really missing the Yakuza series on there. Like the closest thing like, I have. It's probably like is, yeah, like I would say you know you have your Tekken's. You have your big first party games, you have your Final Fantasies, your Souls Born. You kind of have all these like the quintessentials and some like lesser known ones as well. Uh, yeah, I would say that maybe like the only gap in your list would be the Yakuza series, like the last like big hurdle. Yeah, like I can't think of it. Like maybe like I don't have many racing games, but I have a few, and I don't have many fighting games, but I have a few. Um, so yeah, Yakuza definitely feels like um, a series that that's waiting that I'm waiting for. Like I don't know when I'm going to do it, but I know I will. I've been really, really close to picking up Judgment, um, mm-hmm. which is Me you know effectively well, yeah. that's effectively the the new Yakuza series mm-hmm. because they've now stated that um, the the mainline games now are basically the Judgment games. And the Yakuza games from this point on are all going to be RPGs like uh, Like a Dragon. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, I really want to play Like a Dragon because that looks awesome. And I really want to play Judgment because that looks super awesome. Um, but I feel like I should play the, the, like the origin story for those games first. You yeah, know? for such a long running series, it's actually um, rare um, that you can play all of the entries on the PS4. Mm, so yeah. like, um, like, I don't think I'm going to do all of them because there's just too many. But... Yeah, like I've done Zero and I absolutely love that game. Um, it, it is, it's so, Yakuza is a very difficult game to explain. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, it's, um, it's kind of like its own, its own thing, but um, I yeah. absolutely loved it. The trophy list, it's, it's difficult. It's definitely difficult. It's a mix of, you know, time, multiple playthroughs, loads of mini games. And if you struggle with the mini games, you're gonna have a bad time. Mm. Um but I, I, I think after finishing it, like I had Kiyoami, Yakuza Kiyoami, that's like Yakuza one. I had that installed and I was gonna hop straight into it. And I'm like, no, I, I think those are like big projects almost that mm. you kind of like space out or may- maybe it'd be a good way to just like burn through them all while you're kind of in the mode i don't know but um actually yeah, may- maybe yakuza maybe we can try to plant them all together like 
<laughs> like me and you sit could down do, I could do like screens. yeah I could do like now I could do Kiwami and then you could do Kiwami 2 and then I could do you know Three, one then and then you could do two and yeah whatever oh my god I look through my list going this looks terrible <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah. um, maybe I, I might just even skip them and just go straight to judgment and like a dragon um, yeah I, I would say zero is the like the best one hmm. to start with uh, for obvious reasons you know um, yeah yeah, but I'd say yeah. Like I, I, I kind of want to. It's just so many games. But we'll we'll go Yakuza. We'll go Yakuza. Joy um, Dancer. So, what sequel would you like in a series that appears to be dead? Uh, this is from Heroic Age. Uh, I.e., for me, it would be Breath of Fire. Yeah. Well, I feel obligated to answer here um, because Breath of Fire Three is my all-time favorite game of all time. So, uh, I completely fully endorse heroic age's answer and mm -hmm. i'm all on board um breath the fire um had four on the ps1 and then um dragon quarter came out for the ps2 which was like a completely different game but it was really good still but then they released like a, a mobile breath the fire world thing mm -hmm. and but it was like just in japan so they never um they never did anything more with the ip um, other than that, it was like an MMO mobile game, I think. I never played it, but um, I have such great memories of, of 1, 2, 3, and 4 and Dragon Quarter. So, um, yeah, Heroic Age, I'm, I'm, I'm in full agreement. That would be my answer, too. Um, for me, it would probably be um, Silent Hill. Um, like, I, I, I think there was so much potential with uh, Silent Hills that will probably forever go unfulfilled because I think that was just a moment in time with, you know, Norm Reedus, Kojima and Del Toro just kind of coming together like that. I, I don't think that's going to ah, ever happen again, unfortunately. It was a moment in time that was lost. Um, I mean, the obvious answer for me would be Metal Gear, but I think I've just come to, to accept that it's dead. Um, I think after five, gameplay-wise, like phenomenal. Fox Engine is a work of magic, but story-wise, it was definitely lacking. Um, and uh, just trying to think. I'd love to see Rockstar just off one of their older IPs, mm -hmm. uh, namely Bully. Yeah, I think that there's a, a lot of potential for that in a modern world setting. Um, that... <sighs> Again, I like. I I think their next game almost has to be a Grand Theft Auto game, yeah. um, and it's kind of sad because um, I think Rockstar, you know, they had, they were quite innovative and they had like such a variety in their IPs um, back kind of in the early two thousands, the kind of late two thousands. Um, you know, you Max Payne. I know that was Remedy, but it was published by Rockstar. Manhunt, uh, Bully, you had Table Tennis, you, had, you know, Midnight Club, you know, like you had all these kind of like lovely kind of mixed experiences. So I would like to see Rockstar kind of maybe dust off Bully. Um, but yeah, I'd say that those would be the first three to come to mind. Um, do you want to read the next question? Mix it up. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, next question comes in from um, our, our trophy, Elise friend bionic thumbs woolly <laughs> he's, 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 um, he's taken out that name on board yeah um I rightly so it's um, stuck this man is a beast when it comes to all things gaming but um his question is slightly slightly left of field um which one out of the two of us would um if there was a platinum trophy on the line would win in competitive tiddlywinks i don't know what tiddlywinks is I think Tiddlywinks is that game where you like throw something at, at one of the things and then you like win marbles or is that marbles? <laughs> I think that's marbles. You I describe think, yeah. marbles. Maybe I describe marbles. Google, but Tiddlywinks Google, is like marbles, but it's Google got like Tiddlywinks, Tiddlywinks and, in it. Yeah, Google Tiddlywinks, but be very careful because it sounds something like Tiddy something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Tiddlywinks. Let's see. So Tiddlywinks is... A game played on a flat felt mat with sets of small discs called Winks, a pot, which is the target, and a collection of squidgers, which are also discs. Okay. Yeah, I'm more confused. Um, I think we'd probably end up like tying 
Um, and would this be like Squid Game? <laughs> Just. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it sounds like a game that would be in Squid Game. Um, Absolutely. Uh, uh, I I think in anything competitive, and if, particularly if there's a platinum on the line, my money, I'd love to back myself, but I, I, I'd have to give it to you. Oh, I, I don't know. In, in like, uh, it, it, there seems to be some type of like physical aspect to this. So I think that that automatically puts me at a disadvantage. Um, my coordination stops uh, at the at the controller at the, at the base of the finger. <laughs> um, well, it depends, you know, if we're playing it in my house or your house, you know, who has home advantage? I mean, home, home turf. Yeah, let, everyone else can decide this. Who'd win in the game of uh, Tilly Wings between us? Um, so next up, uh, unless you're going to keep reading, I'm going to have yeah, to keep going. Uh, it's I'm Captain Copter team. Nine. <laughs> If you were to start a fresh account, which three Platinums would each of you want to transport from our current list to the new one? That's a, a great question. That is a good question. Um, yeah. Max Payne 3. Yep. Um, I'd have to take Fight Night, Ryan Ford, just because it's so obscenely rare and the amount of politicking I had to do to try to get a fight with the champions. Yep. Fight Night, Ryan Four. Ooh. Fight Night is so rare that if you did transfer to a new account, it would become much less rare because one extra person would have yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That's um, how rare it is. <laughs> yeah, it's at a 0 0.10 on the yeah. same profile, something ridiculous. Um, and maybe... Um, I don't think I could do something like Vanquish again. I think my reflexes are what they used to be. Maybe just Far Cry 2, just take it on board. If I don't have to do it again, mm. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it with me. Yeah. yeah I'm intrigued that's... by yours because you have so many plants. Oh, yeah, this is a really tough one. Um, Surely Gran Turismo 5, man. You're not doing that again. Yeah, like, yeah, I, I'd have to take it just again because it's, I suppose, on a it's principle. the principle. Yeah. yeah, on the principle. So, so that would definitely be one of them. Um maybe red dead 2 just for the, the time investment oh, fuck that's gone yeah. i forgot about red dead 2. it doesn't make um, the three yeah and ooh, i don't know um god I'm, I'm drawing the blank for the third one like maybe maybe like final fantasy 10 because i just remember remember hating that lightning strike trophy oh, so much me this I have Final um, Fantasy X on my Vita, man. Don't tell me this. <laughs> no, it's it's not too bad, but like I remember, just you, you basically have to dodge lightning three hundred times, and you can kind of like manipulate it so that you know when the lightning's coming. Mm -hmm. But you know, like when you're getting up up in the hundreds, that that's when the sweaty palms and the nerves start coming. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to do it like consistently three hundred times, it took me like four or five attempts. And like those attempts lasted like a good few minutes and then I'd be like so disheartened. And I remember just thinking about that trophy and Final Fantasy X would be like one of my, my all-time favorite RPGs from when I was younger. So I always, I, I really wanted to do it again and get the Platinum, but I just remember that trophy being like, oh no, I have to do this trophy, you know? <laughs> it it like, seems a, a trend, like even in Final Fantasy VII, like those uh, mini games where you're in the gym, doing push-ups yeah, and yeah. shit oh, i'm just oh my god it was that took me a few good few attempts on like the last one um, yeah but that one was just really obscene. tough and the it was pull up to bar, yeah. like, just like this yeah. and like one little slip up and i played drums like so i think the rhythm's <laughs> pretty good but was, yeah yeah i was struggling yeah. um okay it's an interesting three yeah i think yeah, yeah. The I might change, like, I, I, might, I mightn't be right about Final Fantasy. It's just the one that's springing to my mind. I remember Final Fantasy X-2 is similarly awkward. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, I don't know. Like, the, like, if I was, I suppose the question is nearly, it's not, like, which one are you most proud of? It's kind of, like, which would you not be arsed doing again, mm -hmm. or so? Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's a very different question, you know? So... Yeah, I, I'll, I'll leave it at that, but maybe I'll, I'll think about it if another game pops <laughs> I'll come back mind. to you. I'll come back to this one, yeah. <laughs> um, so um, next okay. question. Yeah, we've got Char0412. Uh, 
what genre do you think is overdone and which is underappreciated? Open world overdone. Open Are we in agreement? Overdone? Um, like, I don't know. I think it's kind of hard to call like a genre open world, you know? Like... <sighs> Yeah, I know what you mean, but I feel like all been... games are open world now. You know, I know, like but I feel like there's a particular model of open world. We'll call it yeah, the like the action model, adventure. I, kind I of, do think yeah. has become so prevalent to the point where it is like its own genre, yeah. where you know exactly what to expect. Um, I'm sticking with open world because I feel like it's 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 it. Some games like just don't need to be open world <laughs> i mean <laughs> i think it's to its detriment whereas yeah. um and uh, like i adore like red out 2 amazing like amazing game yeah. um and that's open world um mm-hmm. but i think a lot of games lean into that too much where they feel like they need to be open world where they might be better served as being a, a streamlined uh, kind of more semi-linear experience Can I say in the for example something like deus ex yeah. I love the way it's like small, like really detailed hub world. So it's kind of um, like a pseudo kind of small scale open yeah. ended game as opposed to open world. Um, yeah. Like The Last of Us 2 or The Lost Legacy. You know, exactly. Done very well. Yeah. Like an, a lot of space to maneuver where you don't feel boxed in, but not yeah. big enough to the point where the space means nothing. Um, like the, the Evil Within was a very linear game and then the evil within two kind of gave you a little bit of control it was still linear but you had like open maps which which definitely worked a bit better i think in a lot of mm-hmm. ways um because you kind of get could like there's it's, it's kind of like um last legacy where some of the levels are a little bit open but yeah i think that's a that's, yeah i know what you mean i think like every not every game has to be open world and mm-hmm. they seem to be intent on on, on making it so <laughs> yeah yeah um underappreciated um oh um i mean like i feel like the past couple of years seen like a like a weird kind of joining or fusion between like rpgs open world and first person shooters where it's like little bits from everything mm-hmm. like i feel like the kind of true big rpgs they're not being phased out, but I don't think they're as commonplace as the, as they once were. Yeah. Um, like a true, true RPG. Yeah. Um, I, 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 the other one that I'd say maybe survival horror when it's done well, I feel like it's a lost art. Like mm-hmm. to do it. Like I know we've still got like Resident Evil um, seven and eight, uh, particularly seven, which kind of, would be the newest biggest survival horror game and kind of bring me back to silent hills but i feel like that that genre can can be something really special when like all the pieces are in place and i feel like it's i i feel like it's underappreciated how difficult it is to make like a really good game where you feel vulnerable but not weak enough to kind of keep going Mm, yeah no that's true it's it's a nice nice balance to be to be struck there absolutely yeah Do you have any I, other I appreciated that... genres you're a bit more cultured than i am well like i don't know it's like genre is, is kind of it's it's hard to pin down like yeah it, yeah that's what i'm um, saying like, there, like an awful lot of big games like you know the skill trees and stuff it's like well that's kind of soft rpg elements when you think about it yeah um, like a good game takes parts of different genres you know but um i suppose like for me it's um oh maybe maybe battle royales for me um or overdone yeah the overdone one sorry yeah um battle Mm -hmm. royales the fact that it kind of has to be you know again i suppose it's just the flavor of you know the last few years battle royales it's kind of fizzling out a little bit but um you know every game is like a battle royale um mode in it or at least any multiplayer but Mm -hmm. um underappreciated like I, I I do definitely agree with with um, the survival horrors, classic you know, JRPGs um, definitely, uh, yeah. Like I I I suppose I'm going to be do a bit of a cop out answer and then just say like I love 
I love smaller indie games where they're just like not afraid to try something. Like I don't yeah. think indie yeah. is like necessarily like a genre, but I love I love those smaller games. And I think, you know, I like to see bigger developers, you know, push the boundaries a little bit more and take some of those kind of innovative stuff. Um so my answer of the underappreciated genre is um not an answer at all. Um yeah, like I you <laughs> to know bring it all home. I did bring it all answer. home. No, 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 yeah. no. I, I actually think that's a great answer because um yeah, like it's the risk is so much higher, you know, in indie development anyway, because you're working on such fine margins and normally it's like a small team. But I feel like that that kind of breeds an element of risk in terms of their creative output because they need to take risks in order to stand out. And I think that that's something that the industry needs every so often. I mean, like even something like Undertale became, you know, like a massive, almost cultural thing within the realms of gaming, you know, and um, I think that it needs that jolt in the arm, like an outside perspective that maybe they're already on the edge. So that they're, they're like, you know what, I'm just going to, follow like my gut or like my like creativity and try to create something that stands out that is unique and working within certain constraints because i do think you know it almost ties into what i was saying about open world yeah you know i think an awful lot of ps1 ps2 games were better for their limitations because it, it bred a certain type of creativity and how to best work within those limitations i mean just look at the gta uh, remasters Mm -hmm. uh, like an awful lot of things uh, i'm seeing is that it just it just lacks the charm but almost on like a fundamental level san andreas you know the way the draw distance has increased so much it's like yeah it was a limitation to kind of implement fog but it added to like the atmosphere and the feel of the different cities yeah and with that gone yeah. there's like a the taste of what made it special and the kind of like almost spirit of that game is kind of stripped away because all these things working together is what creates like the atmosphere and the essence of it yeah so um they, they definitely did tommy for zeshi dirty dirty <laughs> the, yeah the oh, new no, one I, yeah um i kind of... I, I, I like the gta3 when i've only seen like a couple of gameplay things from gta3 but i'm like did they fuck renovate <laughs> and change the aiming system it's it, they just changed the reticule but it's the same animation where you obviously like when you used to hold R one and aim, it's yeah. oh I I don't know. I'm gonna change my over, my overdone answer to remasters. <laughs> yes, yes, overdone remasters. remasters. That's a, yeah, um, best and final I, answer. But um, truth and uh, it kind of has a, the next question, which yeah. is kind of linked. Um, do we think Resi Four is a survival horror? So to him, it was kind of too far away from survival horror. So. Um, uh, you know things like yeah, inventory make, management limited ammo, ammo and health. health interesting puzzles and made a few choices like having enemies drop health and ammo that made a few like, less, like well i guess the difference with that was it was more common for them to drop ammo but i mean like uh, when you play you know the og versions of resi one two and three i mean there's plenty of items around mm, um yeah as you're playing through it um it depends. Like I remember playing it on professional, and it very much felt like a, a survival horror game. Yeah, uh, on that difficulty, and I mean, more like a straight up action game. I mean, yeah, you kind of like. I don't know if you were there, Truth, when it released, but um, it was like that was a like a like industry uh, shaping game. Like that, that mm. there was like a time before Resi Four and a time after. Yeah, it it was so original. Like, um, like they always talk about the over the shoulder. Splinter Cell did it first, by the way. Um, yeah. But um, I would consider it like that section with the regenerator is is terrifying still to this day. And that you view, yeah. yeah, like, like it wouldn't it wouldn't be like straight in like you know a super difficult survival horror. But I definitely still feel like it has its feet firmly planted there particularly on the the harder difficulties yeah like it definitely it definitely reinvented what survival heart could be because um you know now we've got the kind of two branching paths of you know you're helpless or you have a way to defend yourself and mm -hmm. 
Um, you know, Resi Ford definitely crossed, you know, crossed into, you know, Leon being a super badass and being able to defend himself. And, you know, he absolutely can. Um, I think to me, like Resi 4 is the quintessential survival horror game in a lot of ways, just because it set the groundwork. But I really love the other, you know, the other kind of survival horror style games like, you know, like Amnesia or um, Soma or, you know, kind of ones, or maybe it's not Soma, Soma's more of a walking sim, but, you know, like Amnesia and then uh, the the games like like Alien and even Evil Within is a little bit more on the, the kind of yeah. the, the vulnerable side, I suppose. But those games um, where you're more vulnerable are, are now like their own kind of separate genre kind of thing. Yeah, um, we're talking about genres a lot. It's mad. Um, no, yeah. I, I, I would say it's a fair criticism of Resi 5. Definitely, Re- Resi 6 is like the room of video games. Like there's like Tommy Wiseau directed that, but... um. Yeah, it, um, like Resi 4 was definitely the start of the slippery slope to It was the, the start action. of it. I still feel like it was still yeah. on that hill before it slipped. Resi 5, I think, was a definite change of direction. But I think 4 was kind of like the purest balance between the two. And I yeah. think it utilized the shooting mechanics in a way that were still kind of rooted in survival horror. You know, like not being able... I know you couldn't move when you shot in Resi 5. You couldn't 6. But the small things like that, I was like, yeah, you can use an array of weapons, but when you use them, you're completely vulnerable. So yeah, when you come yeah. up against someone like Dr. Salvador, I mean, yeah, you're shooting at him, but you're taking a huge risk by standing still because he's yeah. a very fast enemy. Never mind like, like all the other I ones. was whatever, like I was like 13, 14 or something when, when Resi 4 came out, yeah. if I'm remembering correctly. Um, and like that game was so scary at the time. Like Doctor Salvador was. The village is burned in my mind. It's yeah, so iconic. He was so me. terrifying. Like I, mm-hmm. the fact, like it was the first time I ever saw like someone with a chainsaw chase me, and I was like, when oh he my when God. he climbed up that ladder, when yeah. I was barricading myself one of the uh, the homes, you know the way you could like push things against the door. I thought that was so cool at the time, but when he like came up the ladder, I remember yeah. going. <laughs> <laughs> I remember shooting him in the head a few times and like he didn't flinch and I was like oh my god what are, what's gonna happen you know because like you're kind of used to them flinching and stuff and then yeah like that like that yeah especially the you know Leon definitely gets a little bit more gunsy towards the end you know I think the regenerator section is, is definitely a standout but that, yeah, I that's think kind of like start that's like a trope yeah. of res. It always ends in like explosions and them like does, looking yeah. out of a helicopter. Like, <laughs> yeah. That, that's every just, one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, every single they're one. They're always evac'd at the end. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Great, great question though. I could talk about Resi 4 all day. Yeah. Yeah. I, but let, let's move on. But essentially, on. I, I do think it's still could be fair to consider a survival horror. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think truth is, is definitely, you know, on on, on a, a side that has a lot of support to it as well. Like a lot of people give that criticism that Resi 4 was the, the pivotal mo- moment where it stopped being survival horror. And, you know, I appreciate that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fair, fair okay, point, we'll, so. we'll try and go through a few of them a bit quicker because um, we're, we're not doing this very quickly as usual. Um, I know. Our next question is from Oof. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, so two questions. Um, have you ever created an alt account to speedrun a game that you like? And do you go for multiplayer or single player trophies first? So for me, with the speedrun thing, no, I haven't. Um, oh no, I did actually. Sorry, I'm. I'm yeah, I was gonna say no. That like generally, I I would just kind of play like a different thing. But I did try the speedrun Resi two for for quite a while. Um, because I I wasn't like big into trophies when Resi 2 came out and I I was watching a lot of speedruns at the time so I, I did try to to get some speedruns going for that game and I really enjoyed it and I was like really into watching the speedruns and trying to improve my time um, but that was that was literally the only time I've ever done that um, and then uh, for me like if if there's a single player and multiplayer list on the game, 
I think generally I would try to do the multiplayer first so that mm-hmm. I don't have to have that looming over me when I have the single player. But I think that that could could change depending on the game. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I have an alt account that occasionally I'd fire up, you know, something for like a PlayStation Plus game if I'm kind of on the fence just to give it a little test. and um, But never, never created an account to speed run. Um, I might try to speed run MGS3 on the Vita just to see how fast I can do it. If I do stack it, like, I, I, I don't know, still on the fence about that, but... Um, mm. And for multiplayer and single player, um, my personal preference is always to begin with single player, namely just to get familiar with the mechanics that I can then carry it into multiplayer. But mm-hmm. if I'm worried about server closures, like recently with Killzone Mercenaries, I pretty much focus on the multiplayer first because there is yeah. that element of like dive where I'm like, oh shit, like this might close at any moment. Time sensitive. Yeah. So it really depends on that. But if it's a game that I'm like, not worried about like the a time limit or anything like that. I I personally prefer to go into the single player first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's a good a good uh, mantra to have with them. I think. So next um, question. Next question. Um, Rena, Rena or Rina? I'm not sure. Um, mm-hmm. What are your feelings on junk plats and Sony turning plats into participation awards? And this one's got um, a few, a few different a few emojis, uh, emojis. A few emojis. Yeah. That's how um, you know it's a, it's a scathing question. And um, well, we actually so, have a video on this. Yeah, we, I think we've talked about this quite a lot, but I think it's a. I like the bluntness of the question. Um, I, my thoughts on this are, I personally don't care about the junk plats or whatever, or uh, you know participation awards like i'm not into the the numbers specifically myself anyway but i do i do have a bit of an issue with the quality control of the playstation store i feel Mm -hmm. like there's some games that are just so blatantly rubbish that they should not be on the playstation store and i think that's a bit of a controversial opinion but i just like i find it very hard to sift through the crap sometimes and some of the games are just they're just literally mobile games that got like a a port for whatever reason and they just really don't have a place on the playstation store in my opinion Mm -hmm. um but look you know i suppose at the other end of the spectrum you've got like a developer there who's trying to share their game i'm sure but like I yeah I I I feel like the PlayStation Store could definitely do with a little bit of kind of a quality assurance re reanalysis. Um, that would be yeah. my thoughts on this. Yeah no the, no I I completely agree with you man. Um, for me it's um it's more a case of the lack of consistency on Sony's part because as old school trophy hunters, I remember games yeah. like Journey not getting a platinum. Um flower you know max pain one doesn't have a platinum um that's more recent as well um or what else there is one big the warriors um didn't have a platinum um so i feel like uh, walking out season two as well like it's 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 so inconsistent and i don't know how they went from that unit of measurement because it used to be kind of like a you know kind of like a line in the sand that wasn't defined whatever knew where it was where it's like oh, okay that doesn't actually deserve platinum you know like i i don't know what it was but back back in the ps3 days it was kind of like clear it's like okay f- fair enough but i don't know how they've gone from that to like the other extreme where it's like yeah. literally everything gets a platinum and they've kind of devalued you know this system that they've created because they have like i'm like you i'm not really a numbers person for me it's all about the game itself and having like the little image of that game that you like or whatever just on your list, I, I think it's cool. It's kind of like, you yeah. know, uh, the memory cards where you want only your favorite games on it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I completely agree, man. Like it's it's almost not even like a plat problem. It's like a game problem where like these games that are like super short or half arsed, the only reason they've any chance of getting out there is because of their easy platinums which mm. is just, it's it's weird. And then the multiple stacks and stuff. Yeah, it's kind no, of it like, on one hand is I don't really care because I it hasn't changed the way in which I approach trophy hunting or playing games or anything. But yeah. I do think it's kind of like a little bit 
sad when you see you know someone's profile and they have like 800 plats and it's lit it's just that it's just games that are like five ten minutes um because i i think for me then it's like it's kind of defeating the purpose of the console <laughs> you know you buy a console for me anyway to like get the most out of that and as you said these are games that could probably be played on your phone or your Nokia 3310 in some cases. So yeah, I, I it, yeah, I don't really like have any strong feelings on it personally, but like on a bigger scale, it's like the quality control needs to be kind of met because I think if it keeps going like this for years and years, you're gonna see people with like ludicrous amounts of platinums and it just it just won't mean anything. <laughs> I think we've gotten there already. I think that's that that ship has has been yeah. sailed away crashed into an the iceberg. iceberg was a platinum <laughs> <laughs> I love how we both went to um, iceberg there iceberg straight away yeah um, um okay thanks for the loaded question um yeah thank you reina <laughs> <laughs> so um <laughs> next we've got we've got lee peak from uh missing collectible um and uh, a great trophy hunter and um also great and an videos. even better boy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what's the trophy you never thought you'd be able to do, but eventually did? Uh, fight night. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Simple. Just fight night. Succinct. And um, for me, um, future Dan is going to say um, Crash Bandicoot one and two because I really have to go back and do them, but I still haven't done them. Um, present Dan is going to say um, I probably have to go with Vanquish again. I remember playing that and just going, "This, this is impossible. impossible. I, said, yeah. I can't do this." um yeah so so that one maybe and there's i've done a lot of backlog clearing over the last kind of two years or so so there's a lot of games on my list that i thought i'd never go back to um and i did um but i suppose tomb yeah. raider underworld started it all yeah tomb raider underworld i think the plot time was like 11 years or something yeah i, I think years. on the list i was laughing because it was like find you know two collectibles and then the it was like 2009 and it's like find like five collectibles like 2020 it's like how well were those collectibles <laughs> jesus yeah, christ really really well yeah no lara was not good at her job um, um okay next question next question um, uh from vigilant crow what's your drink of choice when gaming does it change depending on the type of game being played <laughs> yeah uh, this is gonna be a very That's disappointing good. answer um normally when i'm gaming it's kind of late so i'd maybe just have water or tea <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> to preserve my old bones um no like i am i am partial to the alda pepsi max or mm. um maybe like if you're speaking like a drink as in like an alcoholic beverage i don't really drink in game in fairness um but if i were i drink and i like uh smithix guinness and a whiskey kind of a quintessential irish man cool yeah no they're, they're... Solid options, yeah. I'd say uh, you're Iron Brew for some reason when you game. How did you know? Yeah, Iron Brew or... <laughs> um, I love Iron Brew. It's my favorite drink ever. Um, I I also love Pepsi Max as well. And of taste. And I'm big into Red Bull. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I rarely drink something that's not carbonated, you know? It would be... Carbonated salt? Yeah, I'm quite into the carbonation. So, um, yeah. So, so if it me. has bubbles, Dan will drink it. Um, yeah. So, next question from Devin. What's your favorite game in the Resident Evil franchise? We spent an awful lot of time talking about <laughs> Resident Evil, so we're going to have to get this yeah. uh, quick. For me, it's a tie between Resi 4 and the Resident Evil 1 remake. Nice. Yeah. For me, like, I, uh, the obvious option is Resi 4. Um, I love Code Veronica. I love Outbreak as well. Um, I love Resi 7. I'd probably go, yeah, I'd probably go Resi 4 as the obvious choice and Resi 7 as the less so obvious choice. I I feel like you can't go wrong unless you say Resi 6, really. I mean, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's true. So, Banana Sausage, I believe he's a fellow Irish dude or from Northern Ireland. who wears the trousers in the plant shops relationship? How and where did you guys meet and how did you become friends? Always enjoy all the shy talk you guys put out for us. Keep up the great work. Love from Northern Ireland. Well, that's, that's lovely. That is not well, just I, I exclusively, 
I exclusively wear kilts, so I'm gonna have to give it to. to I don't Nathan. wear any trousers. Um, it's it's a, it's a way of life, really. Yeah. Um, so neither of us, I suppose. I, I like to think that we're both in one big giant pair of trousers, and we're in one leg each. <laughs> one leg, yeah. And there's yeah. like instead of the patch at the back, it's a platinum trophy. Nice, yeah, absolutely. Um, hi, and where did you guys meet? Um, it's been a while. Um, yeah, really my like, earliest memory of of you is um, playing rock band. I think. Yeah, I, I think we were playing. Cool. We were playing. We were playing rock band. Um, college is the answer, but yeah, um, mutual friends. Back college. in your Noel Fielding days. Yeah, oh, I'm still in my Noel Fielding days. <laughs> <laughs> I never left. <laughs> I never left. No, um, yeah, uh, Noel Fielding. Just as a as an aside, is is definitely one of my favorite people. Oh, he's um, fantastic. But um, yeah, yeah, I remember met in Galway. Yeah. Um, and it was many, through a mutual friend, ago. and I'm just like that guy looks cool. I think we were <laughs> saying like we're we were always hanging out the same places before we met, like officially. Where I can remember yeah. seeing your other friend, um, because I'm like, oh, that's that guy. That's who that is at all those concerts and stuff. So um, I think it was kind of like was it around the time of the Melgar Solid play we went to? You know, the Melgar Solid musical. That was oh, a yes, thing that yeah. happened. That did so, happen, yeah. So I yeah. think that was when we really bonded, when we both went to a Metal Gear Solid musical. Yeah. And then we were in a band and we've been friends ever since. Yeah, we we started a band, um, a very unsuccessful band. Um, at There's that. still time, Dan. There's still time. Still time. But yeah, I just remember being over at Nathan's um, and we were... We were rehearsing i'll do i'll do my my air quotes again uh bring bringing them back uh and then nathan was like oh i'm just gonna you know finish this game and he was like oh, oh i nearly got the platinum and i was like hmm, what's a platinum <laughs> <laughs> i got the hook man like i'm yeah i big really time. went overboard like but uh because so, i, I, I hadn't find... like played playstation for like a year and a half or whatever because i was like i was hugely into mmos kind of towards the end of, of, of school. And then when I went into college, I just didn't play anything. We had a, like a Wii in the house in, with my friends and we used to play the Wii sometimes, but I didn't really play too many games. And then the, the, PlayStation, um, the PlayStation kind of explosion happened. I always had PlayStations um, day one anyway, game. but I, yeah. I just didn't play it that much at that time because I was, I was kind of busy with other things at that point but yeah uh, but yeah that, that, that was history short story. that was history that's a short story of the plat chums um <laughs> so uh next question from ray i lived with ray speak speaking of galway hi ray um in your years of gaming have you ever related to a character or aspects of a character question number two if your lives had a trophy list what would be on it and the big question, if you only have one choice, berries or lions? You should know this, Ray. You live with me long enough, hey. You live with me long <laughs> enough. I'm a lion's tea, man. I'm a lion's gold blend. Um, <laughs> as for, uh, have you ever related to character aspects? Yeah, lo- loads of characters. I mean, like Kratos, because we're both built as shit. Um, uh, no, I would say I related a lot to um, essentially any kind of like super story focus game really i do it, it's very similar to like just movies or books i mean well-written characters you can relate to them or at least understand what they're feeling if my lives have a trophy list what would be on it's just shit loads of collectibles yes shit loads of collectibles you know um congratulations you managed to not open the fridge at 1 a.m or congrats, you went home after the second beer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Are you put your socks on correctly? I I don't know. Um. Uh. And what else? The platinum trophy would be an image of me just going. That would be <laughs> on my list anyway. Well, what what about you? Lions or berries, Dan? You know, I know, I'm Irish, and. Um, no. No, what are you going to say? <laughs> and I am an avid tea drinker, like, you know, an un- 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 unhealthy amount of tea. But I actually you don't mind. Man. 
I actually don't mind like if it's Barry's or Lions, I like them both, but that's kind of it. I don't like any of this, you know, Earl Grey or the tribalism. <laughs> the yeah, I, tribalism. I, I just like Barry's or Lions, and that they have to be like to be honest, I'd put nearly two bags in one cup, um, because I really like it strong. So mm-hmm. um, or I'd leave at least the bag there for a few, you know five minutes to stew. Um, so strong tea. Barry's or Lions, I don't mind. I think they're both quality. Um, but but the kind of my favorite cafe always uses Barry's. So um, so slight maybe, slight bias towards Barry's. Maybe that's but... my slice ba- slight Barry. Yeah, you you, you just like tea. I just I, yeah I love tea and I love tea with milk and sugar as well. So it's not even good for me. <laughs> and what would be on yeah. your life's trophy list? Um, I don't know. I suppose like. I suppose like all the you know the the milestones of life you know you go to school made it to 50 <laughs> fa- fail school <laughs> try it again <laughs> um uh you know all, all that kind of jazz no um oh, for, for me <laughs> for me it would be like um I'd, i think my trophy list at this stage of my life is like you know it's, it's kind of like mostly regarding like little odd job handy things it's like you know successfully fix the washing machine Change or the light bulb. yeah you know it's that kind of so i think it'd be a lot a lot a lot of little miscellaneous trophies like that you know mm-hmm. um we, i was you know we were saying this before but you know like my my dad would be extremely handy he could fix anything and now i'm a dad but i'm not handy so i'm like when's it gonna happen when yeah. I'm go- when am i gonna be handy <laughs> But when did so, I pick yeah. up all these skills? <laughs> so if I got like if I became like a really handy dad, I'd get the platinum. Oh. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. So uh <laughs> next question is from you'll you'll pick up the skills soon, Dan. Um yeah, yeah. F- go from power comes. to master in like household fixing. Um so uh unknown asks, how did you both meet each other and become besties? Um unfortunately a uh, banana sausage uh, beat you to it. <laughs> um next up so wet man but thanks for the comment on one thanks for the comment yeah uh wet man up mikey uh what game would you love to see get a remaster and why and if you had to play one game forever what would it be uh funnily enough mine is almost the same game for this uh, i'd love to see a remake i repeat a remake of metal gear solid uh yeah. and if i had to play one game i mean surely at some point i would get fed up a snake eater mm. um I would actually maybe say Age of Empires 2. Oh, that's a very good choice. Yeah. Yeah. I would say Age of Empires 2. Infinite I... replayability, definitely. Yeah. yeah like, uh, I have put so many hours into that game uh, on PC, uh, like, throughout my entire life. And it's, it's as good now as it was 20 years ago. So, and it keeps getting, like, updated versions. So, I'd, I'd, pick, I'd pick Age of Empires 2. Solid, solid answer. Yeah. Um, game i'd like to see a remaster of um i think i don't know we maybe something left? a bit more <laughs> obscure maybe some i'd love I, dino crisis on the ps1 that's a cool game Ooh. i love that game oh that and, would be um, can you imagine to unveil like a remake of dino crisis yeah and that would that's a real survival horror as well like mm-hmm. that's another another that uh-huh. they could definitely do that really well i think um mm-hmm uh that's just a random one i didn't think about that answer for very long but um i'm sure there's a better answer out there um one game forever like i probably have to go with something that's like you know is constantly evolving so i'd probably have to say destiny just because it is the game i've played forever pretty much (laughs) um and i don't know why i didn't think you'd say that i forgot about your passion for destiny yeah, and just because, you know, they keep adding things to it, so it's not always the same, and, you know, that's, yeah. yeah that's GTA there's, there's Online few... might be a good shot, but True. that's kind yeah. of like hell, though. You're just constantly getting attacked by... Uh... Maybe if you played forever, you'd finally have enough money to buy something. But, yeah, yeah. But, that, that's, <laughs> but that's another thing. So, uh, Captain Coulter9 Col- asks, uh, what are some of your hobbies outside of gaming? What are some of your hobbies, Dan? Um, outside the PlayStation, I play um, the Switch. <laughs> um, <laughs> I dabble in some mobile games sometimes. Um, the, the PC. <laughs> um, no, um, 
you know, really definitely like it, it takes up the, the largest amount of my time because it is my, my one and true hobby. Like I, it, it would be my preference if I have free time, that I would play games. Um, and that's why I love those kind of smaller experience games sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes it's, it's nearly like the equivalent of watching a, a, a movie or something like that. Um, I recently have, have just finished the uh, entirety of the MCU up to, up to the, at least the new release. I haven't seen Eternals yet, but we, I've seen we spend everything like, else now. We spent like an hour and a half on the phone yeah discussing the mcu because you've, you've watched it in like a week and you're like yeah. oh my god <laughs> yeah. so um so definitely watching the mcu was was a hobby of mine but um yeah look you know i suppose outside that obviously i i i, lo- I love playing music you know and that's definitely something that the two of us you're a very um, good guitarist well I, I don't know about good but um i like you know i like to dabble and i like to you know I like, like garth to and wayne's and and i stuff. like to play things yeah <laughs> yeah um so yeah I, I i love playing music and stuff like that so um what be my hobbies um i also like playing music uh mainly drums um but i also dabble in the guitar um i'm a massive film buff so i adore watching movies good bad or indifferent you know uh let's see um i i do kind of like you know swimming and stuff and just i i don't know like um i kind of like just mixing it up every so often as well but i'd say mainly outside of gaming kind of like music and movies and um i think just kind of going out and just kind of meeting people and just chatting and just living life i i I don't know um a reading would be another big one i think in fairness um but that that would be mainly it. Like I'd say, if if I free time, it would kind of lean more towards like games or like a, a really good movie. Like that that's my happy place. That's my happy place. Um. So, uh, thanks for the question, Cap. Uh, Guy Faruski, checking in here, saying, uh, what football teams do you support? I think uh, it's going to be a short answer for Dan. Uh, I'm a Man United man. Uh, yeah. Just because my grandfather kept harping on about George Best, who was from Belfast, like myself. Uh, he kept talking about him being the best player ever. And I happened to grow up in an era where Cantona and Giggs and Keane and Aaron and an awful lot of Irish players were involved as well. So kind of just picked up the support from there. But I'd prefer not to talk about the 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 kind of, <laughs> you know, football at the moment because we're just amazingly shite. Uh, yeah. <laughs> at the moment <laughs> what about you Dan of all the football teams uh, I'm just imagining like you know um, uh, you know IT cries like oh he's kicking the ball over there now <laughs> pretty much sums it up um, I think my answer is not Liverpool because I've been told not to support Liverpool at the moment by, um, by some people at work so um, yeah my dad used to love uh, love Man United he used to go over um, like once a month sometimes to to watch the games um he got like some ticket or something that meant he could go all the time season ticket <laughs> um, whatever Damn. that's called season ticket <laughs> um but yeah like i i've never been you know a huge football fan as my trophy list indicates with fifa 09 that, that one there. kind of brief fling you had with the fifa yeah. games i i remember um when i got the ps1 i got it or sorry the ps2 I got it really, really early. I got like the kind of the the Christmas that it was released. And it was a big deal, like a huge deal. But the game that came with it was FIFA. And I was like, you know, I was in this this <laughs> this weird situation where I got the new PS2 and Nothing we were able there. to watch like Gladiator on it on DVD. And like, you know, my dad was like, oh, we can watch DVDs and all this. And I was like, all I can play is FIFA. <laughs> Uh, that is, that is just <laughs> but i got really really good i think it was fifa 02 i think um was the game that, that came out it might, um, it might have been fifa 01 or i think it was fifa 02 though but i got really really good at it and um it was it was like i, I didn't i just still don't really understand football but i was really good at fifa 02 um th- i think that's dan challenging 
anyone at FIFA right there. I, I, I <laughs> no, actually, no. open challenge. I'd love to see the Platchums on the same team in FIFA take on Guy Ferruski and Platinum, bro. <laughs> Yeah, you'll need to you'll need would, to, uh, to fill me in on how to do it. Yeah, first. no, I, I I got you, man. I got you. Thanks. So, Thanks. like, lads, you know, come Challenge. and come and have a go if you think you're tough enough to take <laughs> on the plat chums in FIFA. Anyway, yeah. next question: uh, Rise and shine. Your opinions to MLP? I don't understand the acronym. It's My Little Pony. Oh God, no! Okay, you 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 can take the lead on that. Uh, another question: <laughs> favorite trophy? Um, in general, I guess I always like the look of the GK4 Platinum. Mm-hmm. I thought yeah. that was a really cool looking platinum. Uh, sequel you all wish for from a game that is none yet, or last one being long ago? Uh, we kind of covered it. So, um, Science Hill or you know something like that. And favorite activity aside, gaming. All the people ask the same questions, very closely related to each other. So. You kind of covered that, but I guess the main point of your question, Rise and Shine, was My Little Pony. So I'm going to let mm. Dan take the lead on this. Yeah, so, um, whoops, I dropped my microphone in excitement. I'm so excited, my I little dropped pony. my mic. <laughs> um, as, yeah, as someone who's kind of just recently kind of caught up on the craze um, as a, a father to a daughter, um, my Little Pony has surprisingly excellent music in it. Um, so there's, <laughs> there's three, there's like three iterations. There's the My Little Pony, kind of the classic one, uh, Friendship Forever, you know, the, the ponies. Then there's the Equestria Girls, who are like teenage ponies uh, that turned into humans. And then there's the New Generation movie that just came out like a few weeks ago on Netflix. So um, my opinion on My Little Pony is that the music is banging. Uh, it's really good. Um, it's surprisingly catchy. Uh, uh, great for, you know, singing along to in the car. And yeah, that's, that's it. Music is awesome. Ditto. Um, <laughs> next one. Plush milk. Okay, Stone Temple pilots were in about calcium. Uh, what is your favorite type of candy? Candy. Um, I'm a plain Easter egg, Cadbury's Easter egg. That is the greatest thing on the planet. <laughs> nice. There's something nice. different about Easter. it around Easter time. Yeah. Um, for me, probably go with probably go with like a Toblerone. I really love Toblerone. Sophisticated choice. Sophisticated yeah, but not choice. just you know, not not just from the airport. You know, like no, to- no like like, the, like they they sell the cheap shit at the airport. Yeah, like I'd you know, buy you, you I'd buy the, a Toblerone the Swiss, anywhere. The Schweiz um, qualität, <laughs> you know, the Swiss quality stuff. I'm 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 a fiend for for uh, for chocolate, you know, for jellies, sweets, whatever, candy. I I I love American candy actually because it's not it's kind of not readily available here so something like a butterfinger i love a butterfinger um i remember yeah. that place in galway that was doing deep uh deep fat fried mars bars yeah that. i had one of them before a lecture once and i like nearly like collapsed <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it sounds clammy you know like you yeah. just like if, after you would be like whoa Oh yeah, oh. No, it's rough. It's rough. Um, it's nice, so, but it's rough. Yeah. So Tob- <laughs> Toblerone, anyway. So I'll uh, I'll ask the next two questions. So El Parche or El Parche? Do you go for 100 percent of achievements on other platforms like Steam or just a PlayStation? Um, I don't go for achievements in Steam. I had like a brief kind of like fling, you know, little little one night yeah. stand kind of thing with the Steam achievements, but. Ultimately, I just think the trophy system, it just lends itself better to kind of making me want to like get the platinum or something just about the platinum just gives it like that, that kind of seal. And plus the games I play on Steam, something like Age of Empires has like 700 achievements. Nobody yeah. got time for that. Uh, I like Steam would be kind of like my, my pure kind of platform where I just kind of don't even consider um, the achievements or anything. I just play the game. So that's pretty much it. Yeah, for me, I I did definitely try to get all the achievements when I played the games on Steam. Some of them are are impossible, like Team Fortress Two and 
and Counter yeah, Strike that's on and my stuff. Steam, yeah, yeah, it's like too hard. You know, those 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 achievements are crazy. But um, similar, I I kind of play a lot of Switch, and there's no no achievements on Switch, and it kind of nearly therapeutic <laughs> um, <laughs> to like not have to like go for a platinum sometimes. Um, <laughs> you so like, like Kelly, babe. Um, yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, yeah. So, some on Steam or or like the DS or something. Um, I still like would would fire a Pokemon every now and then, and um, but then again, like I make my own achievements in it, like in Pokemon. I'm like, oh, I have yeah. to kill the Pokemon, and you know, and yeah, like the last day, uh, Fred, Ray, who asked a question, was staying here. We were playing San Andreas, the PS2 version. We went back to the the Mount Chiliad challenge. So if the Mount Chiliad challenge was a challenge. I like to think I started back in 2004 where you had to get to the top of Mount Chiliad with a six star wanted level on a bicycle nice just try it it's so (laughs) so much fun when the tanks are like falling off the mountain and they're driving like you know a million miles an hour and stuff just on a bike and if you bunny hop over the tank you get like two points um oh wow so uh it's They're very it's good then, yeah. it, it took us a while because when you're typing in like the the wanted level cheat you know you can see them already coming down you know from the starting ring <laughs> and you're yeah, there like yeah. come on because <laughs> you, you can't start until you get six stars <laughs> yeah um anyway i digress next question beto you two are the cranberries um i'm gonna be controversial and say you two I would probably like the Joshua Tree. Great album. Just great album. How Did His Mantle Atomic Bomb? Great album. Just great solid album. album. Uh, I would say... It's actually a tough one. I do love the Cranberries. I'll just say the Cranberries, just, just to mix it up. Like, Dreams, Linger, you know. Um, just all, all great songs. Um so what are your worst genres both in a skill sense and a dislike sense skill sports fighting games for me huh sports games for me sports 100%. games for me it'd be yeah. uh fighting kind of like tekken i was always like gone or you know the dinosaur in like tekken 2 and i just used the fart move it's all i had it was just enough to stun them and to hope i get like a lucky punch uh so fighting games, but specifically like the 2D ones, I'd say it was pretty decent at fighting I round four, like the simulation ones, but no, Virtual Fighter, Tekken, I, I suck ass. And this like sense, I guess the fighting games, because I suck ass, <laughs> it just it just annoys me. I just get really annoyed playing them. Yeah, um, I'd say the same for, for sports games in general. Like, I don't think there's, I suppose maybe you could, like, I like, I like motorsport games, if that counts. Um, I suppose anything is a sport <laughs> if you try when hard. When you enough. try hard enough. I mean, darts <laughs> is a sport, really. But uh, no, like any 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 kind of EA sports games, I'm I just wouldn't have any interest in, and I wouldn't be good at them because I don't understand them. So okay, so yeah. you can ask the next question. So, uh, Face Palmer, uh, if you could make a five-game platinum gauntlet for each other, which games would you pick, and who would finish their set first? That's a cool idea. That's yeah, a really that's a cool, cool idea. idea. Um, um, I kind of five... feel like like a five-game gauntlet. Like uh, you know, I think like oh, you know, all the Dark Souls games or like something like that. But like, if it's a gauntlet, you kind of have to pick shorter games, really. Um, yeah. So um, it's realistic. I would kind of build up. Mm-hmm. Like maybe yeah. the first two, three kind of easier ones. Um, if I, I mean, I would have to put like a, y- a Yakuza game there. Okay. Maybe like the f- like the fifth game to be Yakuza Zero, and you can give me something like My Name Is Mayo. Um, <laughs> you see, it's difficult because Dan has played so many games to actually like. I'd need to like look at his list and try to like you know find something he hasn't played that would be like enjoyable for him because I, I wouldn't put him through shit games. I just have to say um, thank you. Thank you. you know, yeah, you're, you're welcome. You know, we both know trophy lists are sacred. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put any stains. I wouldn't go over to your house and stain your tablecloth. You know, nice just <laughs> manners, you know? Like, yeah, I would definitely give like, I think I would set up like a nice five, five of my favorite indie game kind of gauntlet. 
Um, is that a god for if it's like, oh, you'll actually really love these games? <laughs> so relaxing. <laughs> like, like the word yeah. gauntlet, you kind of think of like Takeshi's castle suppose, or something. Yeah, or squid um, game. Or, um, um, yeah, so um, yeah, I, I think I'd put on a Yakuza game. Um, if I wanted to be an absolute bastard, I'd put on like a FIFA game, but I wouldn't. Um, I would maybe put on, I'd say actually like Five City, because you don't have any of like the GTA, like uh, OG ones. Um, mm, on your yeah. list so I'd maybe put like the GTA games maybe throw on a Yakuza and maybe you know something kind of small I don't know it'd be more like a PS2 sort of vibe I'd have going just to kind of you cool. know give you some PS2 games on your list yeah I think I'd stick with the with the relaxing gauntlet because um, there's just like a few games that I just, you know, I think everyone should play and they're so easy to get the plat for and they're, they're I quick. like that, the relaxing yeah. gauntlet. The relaxing gauntlet. Instead yeah. of spikes and hammers, it's hammocks and like pina coladas. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but And Dan would finish first. Even if he gave me five indie games and I give him like all the GTA games and Yakuza, he'd still finish first. It's just the way this works. <laughs> I think it's just, you know, it's just the fact that I would, I would take it very seriously. I'd say, and you'd so be like, "Where gauntlet oh. is used, you're you're activated." Yeah. The, the yeah. platinum hunter. <laughs> yeah. Um, so next question. Next question. Uh, beautiful torment. Uh, me specifically, Dan. Why have you not finished Rage yet? You're about thirty minutes to plat. Yeah. Why, um, Dan? Okay. So the the last time I played Rage, I played it on PS Now because I just didn't want to set my playstation 3 up and i was playing rage <laughs> and the, the, la- the last trophy in that i need effectively is like a it's like a mini game where you have to do five finger fillet and basically uh i tried to do it but the latency on ps now made it absolutely impossible it's already very hard but the latency made it incredibly impossible so i could yeah i could load that up and um and try it on my actual playstation i still have the disc for age so yeah i think the other trophies i need are multiplayer ones that need like other people so th- those ones definitely always um put me off a bit and so you could do like a boosting group and get that kind of get them knocked out if, if if it's still still an option yeah um what's the next question there thanks for the question uh, uh, dinny star dx uh scottish independence <laughs> what? what's your opinion um too hot for scottish, the chums it's too hot yeah, for too the hot chums. for the chums it I, is yeah the only thing i'd say with that is the people of scotland need to determine their own future it's no good having two irish lads give political advice on something with such, you know, far reaching ramifications yeah. when especially when we here... have such a blatant bias. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so let's leave it at that. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Um, it at that. so uh, next question Otto, favorite game of all time, Metal Gear Three. Yeah, for me, I, I said it earlier, it's uh, Breath of Fire 3 on the PlayStation 1. But, you know, sometimes I feel like saying um, Ocarina of Time, Zelda, because it's, you know, it's just such a great game. But I feel like it's nearly, it's like I like to say Breath of Fire 3 because it's the more like obscure answer. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, but, but Ocarina of Time is, is just, um, you know it's it's up there for the it, for for valid reasons you know? valid reasons so uh yeah. wcb asked the plat chums achieve worldwide fame and hollywood come knocking which <laughs> actors portray the chums and is it a tv series or a movie comedy or crime drama <laughs> um, oh god um who's the most disheveled looking hollywood star i'll pick him <laughs> um I was going to say Brendan Fraser. <laughs> so, so I would be honoured to have Brendan Fraser play me. Um, someone told me I look like Bon Iver before, but I think that's just because I have a receding hairline and a beard. Um, yeah, Justin Watts' face. Um, that's a good yeah. shot. That's a good shot. I, I, I think it would be like a once-off movie, you know? Um, yeah, I think my hair best. isn't... Okay, my hair isn't just there yet, <laughs> but like... <laughs> I think that's that's the you know <laughs> Platchums in five years. I think I'll or, be there. Or I um, think the wrestler Daniel Bryan. 
<laughs> for I, I you, the rest are, no, no, for you, the rest. Oh, for are, me, yeah, Daniel, Daniel Bryan. Bryan. I yeah. don't know him. I must look him up. I, th- I think Daniel Bryan. Go, go, cool. Google him there. I, 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 I think Daniel him. Bryan. Mm, yeah, yeah, possibly. Yeah, uh, I think he's a bit. <laughs> that's oh yeah, that, that's me there. <laughs> no, I'd say like for me, it did have to be someone like um yeah, like Brendan Fraser, someone fairly washed up. No offense, Brendan. <laughs> just lost his soul. <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually, I saw I saw the the cover for George the Jungle the other day, and geez, he was ripped back in the day. Like he was a gorgeous man. Like no, 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 no <laughs> problem in that. He was a gorgeous man. Um, I don't know yeah. who would play me to be honest. Um, some some has been as well to be honest. If we're playing the Flat Jones. God, I don't. Yeah. Um, I can't, who who could play you? That's a really interesting one. Yeah, I think like maybe like James Franco or. Um. <laughs> He's too hot to touch. We're getting all these dodgy ones that Hollywood wouldn't touch. We want James Franco and Brendan Fraser. <laughs> Why did something happen with James Franco? Oh, I don't know. Probably. <laughs> I didn't, sorry, I don't know if he was like a risque choice. You know? No, I, I don't um, know if he's a bit of a creeper or something. I, I, oh, I it's know, it? okay. Really followed tabloids. <laughs> but, uh, okay, for you, um, Andrew Garfield. I'm gonna say Andrew, Andrew Garfield. Garfield. Yeah. I'll take that. Yeah, I'll take that. I think, I think Andrew Garfield would be a good Nate. Yeah, no, um, he has a kind of nervousness, you know, when he's like, I, 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 I just want to. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna so for I think it is I think well I'll we'll have to say movie you know really like TV I, no one wants a you know a, a crime series. drama I'd like to see you and me like a true detective but true plan yeah. um, it's my favorite genre I love I love crime thrillers you, and, you could be you Woody know. Harrison I could be you know you know yeah that's a good one yeah, yeah. I think I could definitely definitely um, relate to to Woody. I think he could capture my essence pretty well and i think <laughs> you've got a bit of with the, with the beer <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah so that's it so we're basically going to do um you know true detective uh, remake true detective remake platchum's version um so next next question blue moon how much time do you spend playing it on a single day um to be honest i'm lucky if i get an hour or an hour and a half to two hours uh at the moment uh weekends um it really depends, like, if I'm in a game, like, kind of, like, three to four hours. Um, like, I remember with Miles Morales, I did, like, a seven or eight hour kind of thing with it. Mm-hmm. Um, it just kind of depends, you know, if I'm working and stuff, um, and I come home, kind of, by the time I eat, just kind of relax and stuff, you know, it's normally just an hour or two. But it would be fairly consistent. Like, after we record, I probably will go down and, you know, play a little something before I hit the hay. Yeah. That's a that's a, a pretty good one, definitely. Um, I I remember that there's like a there's a website that tells you how much time you've spent on it. Okay, um, Dan's getting the stats. So I, I mean, I'm just seeing if I could pull it up. I think it's is it Exophase that has it. Exophase, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, does it do I, like daily? I don't know. Like, I'm not going to answer this question because I'm just going to get myself in trouble. So, um, yeah, it depends. It depends. Enough in Dan plays <laughs> as much as required. Um, as much as so, required. Uh, DP Mac Attack. When you do a trophy list review of an kind name game that you give massive respect to the gamer for platforming, uh, anything that's like skill based. Um, really shine so i for me like once a jump out like you know max Payne 3 vanquish something like yakuza final fantasy is always a good one you know souls born kind of instant street cred um an awful lot of like jrpgs i feel like are always respectable because of the sheer time sink and i guess like the micromanagement aspect of them um but i feel like the list that i give the most respect to are lists that you can tell that someone just likes playing games just a mm-hmm. wide kind of mix um, and like a good kind of, you know, sp- spread across all the essentials or, you know, the big games and some indie games is why I kind of love seeing like smaller kind of games on it. Um, that's, yeah. that, that's just me. Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a very fair assessment and I, I would agree. I would agree, definitely. Yeah, um, 
So. I think, I think for me, games that like I haven't done yet, but I want to. If I see games like that, I'm like, oh, I wish I have that platinum, or I wish mm -hmm. I I'd done that platinum. Then that that definitely does. So like, the Yakuza games, um, a lot of like the fighting games that um are very difficult. A lot of the driving Street Fighter games. Four. I that was yeah, one yeah. game I'm games like, like that. I wish I'm I like, could wow. do it. I just can't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Lou Moon asks, how many controllers broke for you, Rage excluded, during the PS4 generation? Uh, none. None for me as well, actually. Yeah, yeah. you've had issues um, with your PS5 controller, but I, I yeah. never had a single issue with the PS4 controller. I got the Uncharted 4 uh, collectors one, you're like the blue and black, and I mm. still have my original black controller that came with the box and the console. Yeah. And I've, like, I think like there was a bit of analog drift issue on the black yeah. one. So if I'm playing something yeah. like you know FIFA or like a shooting game where I need accuracy, um, I would use the the Uncharted controller, but um, yeah, no, I've never. It's it can, it's completely functional. Um, so, yeah, same for me. Like if I, I think there's like a like nearly like a thirty degree section on the the left analog stick that's dead and it doesn't work on my PS4. So if you need like to to point something in the in the corner, you have to kind of go up and then across instead of just diagonal. Um, thing is you adjust you know it's like you, you just, know that the, you it, that's your controller yeah. you know you're the master yeah. of that controller it's but, like you know how to kind of manipulate it to get it to do what it needs to do like i i got the ps4 on release day and i then gave that console to to my father-in-law because um i got the, the ps4 pro so uh, i've had that but he has like the original controller and it still works perfectly um, it's it's definitely like you can you know it's worn down and the triggers are aren't like they used to be but yeah the ps4 ones were very very well built because i think they just focused on the quality and like durability the ps5 mm -hmm. controller feels amazing but two have broken on me this year already so i'm not nuts. instilled with confidence for that. so next question would want to if, if anyone's still here it's a, it must be an hour and a half long um, <laughs> so one of the, we're 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 almost there though. Thanks for all the questions. I'm actually surprised yeah, how many yeah. people asked. Um, so Luke Lohenberg, which boss in any game was the hardest you fought to date? And also, hello Lucas. Um, <laughs> the hardest boss I think recently that comes to mind was Father Gascoigne because I feel like mm -hmm. that's the first kind of wall that you hit in Bloodborne. Yeah, and I think historically, um, I remember really struggling with the last Colossus on my first playthrough of Shadow of the Colossus, mainly because I hadn't upgraded my like grip meter enough. Uh, and uh, I think like my PS2 controller is a bit dodgy. I remember like, str I remember struggling with that. And like the fourth one, uh, you know, with the big sword that you can kind of like jump on top and like catapult you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, there haven't been any two recently that I've, Really, like, I think Bloodborne, Father Gascon is that wall where I'm like, okay, okay, I kind of, <laughs> I see what you're doing. So I kind of know what to expect with, you know, um, say like in Dark Souls, uh, you know, what when the bosses are coming up, that, uh, yeah, um, that'd be my answer, I think. Maybe Father Gascon would be the hardest one that comes to mind for me. Yeah, the hardest one for me was, I think it's probably... Back on when I, in the PS2 era, uh, Final Fantasy XII, um, Yazimat, he's like a he has like 50 million HP, um, and I was playing oh, this, God. you know, pre pre internet, you know, so it like oh, or not, well, not maybe not like pre internet, but pre like you know before I hit internet, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pre like you know, this you know kind of regular broadband, I suppose, um, or maybe I'm misremembering that, but anyway. When I played this, when I played Final Fantasy XII, I remember, I remember like not having like I, I I didn't like you know Google what to do or whatever that wasn't available to me at the time. And I remember like trying to find like the optimal team and stuff, and the the battle like literally took like hours, you know, because it's fifty million HP and he can kind of wipe you every few mi every few like minutes or so with like a like a a super cast thing so you're always at danger of like losing mm -hmm. um but i played it again 
on the, the re-release on the PS4. And you have like a lot more tools at your disposal to defeat them. And of course, there's like a trophy guide and it tells you exactly the team to use and exactly the method to do it, you know? D- d- so, d- different times. Different just, times, just different yeah. Times. So, where were we? We're back. Uh, Oof is back as well. Uh, have you guys watched Squid Game yet? Yes, we have. Yeah. Uh, very much liked it. Um, I thought it was unreal. Yeah. Next question, so WCB. Good. The chums get their own brand of breakfast cereal. What would it be? Mine would be Crunchy Nut Plat Flakes. Nice, nice. For me, it'd be like Lucky Charms, but um, they'd all be shaped like Platinums. And it'd Lucky just chums. be the marshmallows. Lucky Chums. Lucky there. Chums. <laughs> Lucky Chums. Nice. But there wouldn't be any of that crap cereal bit in it. Should it just be the marshmallows? Just <laughs> <laughs> like little Platinum Marshmallows. <laughs> little Platinum Marshmallows. And trophies and stuff. And you can fish out the plats. And the, ooh, they're nice. Ooh. Yeah, so they're I, I go l- l- Lucky Chums. Lucky Chums. <laughs> Um, Swift Guyver, when are we all getting Plat Chums merch? I want a mug. <laughs> Does anyone really? <laughs> like, really? I, I'd like a mug. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, Pending. I Pending. I, I don't know. Um, what design would it be? Just me and you as like Rust and Cole and like True Detective. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um, I don't know. Uh, this is something that we don't really consider much. We were even surprised if someone, um, if you genuinely mean that question, um, <laughs> <laughs> because there might be an element of sarcasm to it. Um, <laughs> look, look, yeah, if you want a mug, send me your address and I'll send you a mug. Like it might not yeah. be with us, but I'll, it'll be a mug. Um, a mug, yeah. Sure. And so if you we want can, a mug, you can write Swift, on it. Yeah, if, if you want a mug, Swift, get in touch. Um, yeah. <laughs> So unknown, uh, if you still need some questions, uh, who do you think out of all of you would have won the Squid Game? So Dan, Ned, <laughs> Platinum Bro, Elia, Guy Faruski, Josh from the Platinum Trophy, and Fault Boy Steve. <laughs> and if you watch the show, what variety do you think each participant would have lost and why? <laughs> unknown. And he also said, if there's any other trophy hunting YouTubers, just add them in. (laughs) Let them all lose as well. So what other uh, Adam McDermott would be one. (laughs) Oh Uh, my god, this is too good. Ludi XP. Um, (laughs) I'm struggling to think of anyone um, else. So who's gone first? I feel uh, like um, they probably like just but just through like kind of the the hierarchy. I'm guessing like um. Mystic would be like uh, would be like the mastermind behind it. Mystic, know? yeah, <laughs> M- M- Mystic would be. <laughs> we we can't can we talk about Squid Game without giving spoilers? I don't know. Um, that's it. Yeah, that's that's true. Maybe well, we should not spoil it. Um, Spoiler warning for Squid Game. You have been warned. Um, Skip to this point in the video. <laughs> yeah, just five seconds. Later. The ending yeah. is. Um, does um, your man? Uh, What's his face from Plant and Trophy? He's blonde hair, doesn't he? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he'd be the first one. Because remember the first one that dies in the first game? <laughs> he had blonde hair. So there's that logic. <laughs> so so Plant and Trophy, He's gone. Gone. Yeah. gone instantly because of the hair. Um, I would say next up, to be honest, I, I do think it would be me. What do you think? I, I, I think that second game would, would, would have done me in. Um, so I'd the say second I, game was. Well, the... I like no, no. I like to think that me and you would fall off the tug of war together. Just <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe. The, I think that's the the diplomatic answer. Why don't all of the trophy guys and gals get to up to the to the tug of war, and, and just they, because they lose to like an achievement hunters. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Ouch. Or we lose to, to, you know, to people who do physical. You, you don't. You don't actually. Do you, know who I th- do you know who I think would win? <laughs> who? Fault Boy Steve, fucking wild card man. Wild. Ooh, yeah, Fault Boy yeah. Steve. Yeah. <laughs> or Ilya. Ilya is doing pretty oh, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's... Schley, like Schley, you know. Um. <laughs> Ilya is like the, the dark horse, you know, because he's kind of. He's kind of come out of nowhere and he's doing these like savage edits, you know? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. No, I'd yeah. be Team Vault Boy Steve. 
Okay. Yeah, I'll go for Ilya then, I suppose. Yeah. But I think everyone, I think everyone would make it further than me anyway. I think I'd be like, um, I'd be like looking around and on the first first game, game I, I'd be gone. I'd be like, "What's that?" Um, <laughs> that was a great question. We could great flesh it like more. We um, could, yeah, yeah. But pretty much anyone but us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so thanks for the question, unknown. Uh, it's me, Pete. As you've been uh, out in charge of your favorite game during development, what would you change and why? Um, so what would we change? during development well if it's their favorite game they've done a good job um <laughs> so maybe with metal gear solid <laughs> thank you saying metal gear solid um i would maybe try to remove the loading screen you know between areas maybe have like a reference that you're changing area but i'd maybe add that that'd be cool yeah like an instantaneous you know just black screen to like the next yeah, 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 kind of that'd be cool. <laughs> that'd um, be possible on the PS4, anyway. Yeah, well, you saw the GSHA remaster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't even run at six, like 30 frames a second, which is just cool. so stupid. Um, right. Would you make any changes to your favorite game? Or are you, you good, you good to move on to the next question? Yeah, I, like I can't... I could go into, like, the, the ins and outs of, you know, maybe, like, the... The pacing of Breath of Fire Three, but I think we'll, I think we're better to move on. Yeah. So Kanye asked thoughts on the payment limitations on the PS3 and Vita. Think they'll ever have the entire backlog of PS3 games playable on PS9? Well, we were kind of saying earlier about PS9 that I would love it to kind of turn into like a legacy. Um, yeah. Uh, Be amazing. Um, it's kind of, it's just, it's just the way games are digitized and with you know online payments and stuff this just kind of comes with the territory i mean this is something mm. that's to be expected uh the psp store closures were kind of i think that would have been fair but i feel like the fact that the ps3 vita and psp in like one file swoop were just kind of going to be removed was a little worry <laughs> or kind of like yeah. um, that was like the big red button um i think as long as there's ways to claim the games that you bought um i'm all right with it but i do think in a broader sense it, you know that whole discussion of game preservation and stuff like that will these games be brought forward maybe under an umbrella like ps9 where if you can't buy them directly from the store they still live on through ps9 in some way that would be what i'd be concerned about you know like a game with the gta remasters they removed you know the means to buy the original ones so yeah. it's it's one of those things where you know i think good people out there preserve this media but um i think being able to preserve it and share it legitimately and legally is also I important for me anyway so uh short thoughts on it because it's kind of a meaty topic um it was to be expected but it still kind of sucks <laughs> yeah um i said you said just there you said oh i i think they're a legacy thing or that they should be you know that should be legacy and i said excellent i didn't mean that you know that we should scrap ps3 or anything but i mean that i would like to see them um kind of re available somewhere else you know for the mm -hmm. you know i'd love if they all were, were implemented into ps now um i know i i think i know from 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 reading about it that the payment limitations are just there because um credit card security is very very expensive to like you know keep renewing on these mm -hmm. older stores so that's why they had to get rid of it because basically i think either the ps3 just couldn't couldn't keep up to date with like the new payment systems that that are being out or it was too expensive i don't know mm -hmm. but um yeah like these these things uh, and and it's why i'm still hesitant to go pure digital is because yeah. it's always a, a, a worry you know um, yeah, you're kind of taking a risk. You're taking a risk when, when you're fully digital. Um, um, so uh, we have three questions left. Well, I'll, I'll call asks. Ray and answer his because I think uh, this is hitting two hours. So, um, <laughs> so Blue Moon asked, it has to be, we all knew it some would ask sooner or later. Uh, here it is. What can I do to become your friend on PSN? Uh, just add us, I yeah. suppose. Like, like I don't really like blank friend requests to be fair. So if you kind of make a mention who you are at the very least, um, 
just I, I mean her PSN names are right there I mean we're not keeping them under lock and key I, I would just like preface it that I'm like not I'm probably not a very good PlayStation friend. yeah me too I just sign on and play <laughs> yeah you know I wouldn't be like I, I don't do any of the social ex- aspects on the PlayStation like so I, I wouldn't be like a great PlayStation friend but I'm happy to add anyone you know up to the limit of friends whatever that is mm-hmm. um happy to, to add anyone um i'm just I, I don't even like see the friend requests to be honest i just power the yeah, playstation I, I, and I, I, actually, I haven't i didn't check for ages in like a couple of months ago there was like maybe like 25 or 30 just sitting there and i'm like oh god <laughs> just, yeah so it's not like a it's not an intentional thing i'm you know i i just never be happy to check we should organize platinum uh platinum game nights that would be cool that would be cool probably really cool cool. actually we should yeah we'll think about it (laughs) we'll think about it anyway eileen galvin uh if for some reason they let you complete one of your platinums that you couldn't finish because of the online being shut down would you do it if you have to give up your most rarest platinum Ooh. if i could 100 percent fee for 10 i actually think i'd sacrifice fight night for the greater good yeah for the greater good I think so. Yeah, I think you should. I I would say do it because, like, Fight Night's amazing and everything, but the hundred percent, the hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I'd do it. For Maybe. me, no. Like, there's nothing. There's no game on my list that I would be like, re- and I'm like really gutted that I can't go back and finish. Like, there's some mm-hmm. games there, like Evolve. I never really played that. Um, and. I never got the trophies in it and the online shut down and Uncharted 3 and Uncharted 2, I think they, I oh, can't sure. get any Uncharted more trophies on them. It was nasty though. It was nasty. Um, so yeah, like I'm, I'm perfectly happy not platinum any of them. Mm-hmm. Fair yeah. enough. So last question. We're almost done, lads. Blue Moon again. When you're close to your next platinum and if you don't doubt that you'll get it, why not make a live stream on YouTube like Game XY Road to Platinum? Um, well, I thought it was pretty close with the Dark Souls one. Oh, we all know how that turned out. So um... <laughs> it can be unpredictable. Yeah, the it can last be unpredictable. Trophy. I would like to do live streaming at some point. Uh, like we were contemplating maybe doing this as a live stream. Uh, but I feel like you know we'll we'll just kind of get the questions done because we thought, we thought we'd hit one k when we were like crawling. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah, like I, I, I would love to do a live stream at, at some point. It's really just, you know, it, it's a case of getting both the, the schedules to, to match up. That's the annoyance of having a two person channel. You have two kind of schedules to kind of, you know, consider. But yeah, I like I'd, I'd be up for that. Yep, definitely. Definitely. So we did it. Sorry, Ray. I know you have one question there, but I'll just call you <laughs> personally. <laughs> Hello, Ray, to answer your, your question. So I hope this has given anyone some kind of insight into the plat Um Thanks so much. If you're even here, I'd be amazed if you are. Um, so yeah, that was really, really enjoyable. Uh, thank you on this 952 sub special. Uh, we'll hit that milestone uh, pretty nifty. So um, yeah, I, I, I feel like at this point, I think we've said enough. <laughs> I think we've said enough, yeah. Thanks to anyone who watched. Um, if you have more questions, we might have a, like a 1,872. Yeah, yeah. Like if, if, there's, if there's any Q&A. questions, feel free to leave them below and maybe we'll make another one. Um, yeah. If you've any, we'll try to keep it shorter next time. I feel like we always say that. But anyway, Jen, yeah, um, here's to 952 more. So. <laughs> Oh, I kind of cut off. That's where the dresser is. (laughs) Bloodjobs!